Welcome to Investigator Initiated Trials, the Roles and Responsibilities. I'm Gary Freeman, and I have over 30 years' experience in the drug and device industries, working for pharmaceutical device and CRO companies, and as a consultant to investigators. I'm currently operating a niche provider company by the name of the Freeman Group, and have the opportunity to consult with investigators regarding the Investigator Initiated Trial. This webinar is going to highlight the important role that the investigator plays in this type of trial where the individual is both the investigator and the sponsor. Often the investigator fulfills his or her role as an investigator, but not that of a sponsor. This often involves the lack of adequate monitoring, which is paramount for the safety of the subject, which is, of course, one of the important issues for the regulatory authority. We're going to present today the responsibilities of that individual, we'll discuss the risks, and we'll provide some suggestions for compliance. So let's review today's learning objectives. Learning objectives today are fivefold. The first one is to review the applicable federal regulations regarding investigator-initiated trials, including the sponsor and the investigator responsibilities. We're also going to review the steps involved in initiating that kind of a trial, and we'll review the regulatory reporting requirements of the investigator and of the sponsor. This individual is going to have to handle both of those. We're going to then identify the essential documentation, the trial master file, that this investigator should be keeping, and keep in mind that he or she should remain audit ready in today's inspection environment. We're going to then minimize the risks associated with this type of trial by avoiding some common pitfalls that we'll talk about that are associated with them. And lastly, we'll look at some examples of regulatory deficiencies. In other words, the warning letters that the FDA particularly has issued to sponsor investigators that have been working in this area. The issue here is that we want to try as much as possible for the sponsor to stay away from the IND, because the IND will be owned by that investigator sponsor. And so the funding is, is very common. We want to be watchful, though, that we don't overstep our bounds and move it into an IND that your company should be holding instead of the investigator that's doing the trial. So that's the issue that with the regulatory agency we would come up with, is that why is it that this is an investigator-initiated study and not a sponsor uh, IND. If we have too much control, then it could be determined that it should have really been a sponsor IND and not an investigator initiated. So we just need to be mindful of that, and certainly um, that's something that your legal counsel needs to be involved in. Where is where is the point where you can help, and where is the point where you should not? Because the exposure, the risk of exposure, then would be governed by your legal folks. So as we get guidance for the investigator then that's doing these studies, and perhaps yourselves as well, the federal regulations for the investigator-initiated trials is really the same as it would be for a sponsor study. Most of the same rules apply here for the investigator study. Um, the issue is that this person needs to remember that they are both the investigator and the sponsor. So these trials have been growing tremendously in recent years. Without a lot of blockbusters for the big sponsors, there's a lot of thought leaders that are taking the role here and coming up with protocols and presenting them to the sponsor and getting the, the green light to do an investigator-initiated study. Um, so this is the, the key that we want to keep in mind, that they are growing. The regulatory agencies then are watchful of these kinds of studies, more so now than ever before. Um, we will see some common warning letters that we'll talk about, and we'll look at a lot of the issues that are raised and try to figure out how could we avoid that from happening on the studies that we're working. Um, often the same kind of deficiencies are seen when the inspectors view these kinds of trials as they would when they're doing the um, sponsor grant studies. So let's look at the definition again from the Code of Federal Regulations as to what is a sponsor investigator. And you'll see here from Title 21 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 312.3, which is the law in the United States, um, ICH, International Conference on Harmonization, comes in with a very similar definition as well. We'll look at that in a second. So it, it mentions here that the sponsor investigator in a drug or a biological trial is an individual who initiates and conducts the study and whose immediate direction the investigational drug is administered. So the definition here talks about 
a person, an individual. The requirements applicable to the sponsor investigator are for those of the investigator and the sponsor. That's what the 312 piece is now about. Many of the investigators are not familiar with the Code of Federal Regulations because we tend to do that for them in a sponsor-driven study. So doing both the sponsor and investigator function is often new to this individual 